and common example that you must have experienced suppose there's a truck there's a truck and this truck is fully loaded with heavy material maybe iron and this truck is moving now when you see these heavy trucks in highways you don't mess with them you if they want to take over you let them go you don't come in their path because the problem is when something you come all of a sudden in front of these trucks now if even if the driver wants to stop the truck and he pulls a brake the brake what the brake will do will they will stop the wheel but this heavy mass which is loaded on the truck they are moving and all of a sudden they won't want to come at rest they will have resistance because they have high inertia they will not they will make endeavor to maintain its state of motion and they will show resistance to come at rest so even though the wheel stops and the truck would tend to stop but this heavy loaded mass they won't come to rest immediately so they will maintain their state of motion now due to that what would happen rest of the truck will also skid forward so it's very difficult for the driver to stop these heavy loaded trucks immediately because even if the wheel stop the truck will skid forward because of the motion of the load that it is having so higher the mass higher the inertia of these load or even and even after the wheel stops these mass will tend to maintain their motion and the truck the whole of the truck will skid forward so that's why the driver of the trucks they don't apply the brake impulsively they do it very gradually and slowly otherwise the truck will skid okay so that is inertia so inertia is very closely related with mass but inertia is not same as mass because mass is the amount of matter for example suppose you are traveling in a car suppose you are sitting here in the car and uh, and what is happening you 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 are carrying a ball in your hand and you are traveling forward suppose you are traveling in this direction and you are carrying a ball in your hand and the, you throw the ball upward when you throw the ball upward the ball will come down back into your hand now you have moved forward because you are sitting on the car and car has moved forward but the ball don't lag behind the ball doesn't fall in the back seat the ball land from the exact position where it was elevated now ball if you are throwing it from your hand the ball will come back to your hand the reason being when the ball is in our hand and we are sitting in a car then car is moving with certain velocity in turn we are also moving with the same velocity the ball is in our hand and the ball is also moving with the same velocity now when we throw it upward we apply some upward force now the ball is was moving initially in this direction when we throw it upward it goes up but this velocity the motion in this direction that remains the ball will not come to rest in this dimension because the ball was having certain velocity in this direction and that velocity will remain because of its inertia now it doesn't have to do with the mass of the ball no matter it's a heavy ball or a lighter ball the ball will still come into the hands of the thrower because mass is the amount of matter and that thing has nothing to do with this phenomena the ball comes back in the hand because of the inertia the ball maintains the velocity in this direction and even though it goes up and comes back but in this direction it has covered the same distance as the hand of the thrower and that's why it falls back to the same position we will discuss this phenomena later in more detail but for now this is the striking difference between the mass and the ball because we are not taking into account what is the mass of the ball so actually mass is not of essence here because mass is to do with the amount of matter in it and this is actually inertia although inertia is the result of the mass inertia is by virtue of mass but actually it's something different it's it it has nothing to do with the amount of matter in it it has to do with the sluggish sluggishness it has to do with the resistance to its change in the state that is inertia 
okay so even though inertia is related with mass it is by the virtue of mass but it is not mass okay so inertia mass is the amount of matter and inertia is not a physical quantity inertia is a property and it is due to mass mass has a kg unit of kg inertia doesn't have any such unit because it's not a physical quantity okay now one more thing inertia depends on mass only inertia does not depend on velocity for example there are two blocks of same mass one is moving with certain velocity and another is at another one is at rest now both of them will have same inertia even though one is moving and to stop this you have to apply a certain amount of force and this is not at all moving so you don't have to apply any amount of force in this but the fact is in order to bring this block into motion again we have to do some we have to apply some force we have to do some work so <coughs> inertia is actually you look at it both ways how much difficult is it to stop the block once it is moving and how much difficult is it to bring the block in motion when it is at rest so it has nothing to do with velocity it has actually to do with the sluggishness it has to do with the resistance of the change and that depends on mass okay so this is the first introduction for inertia we'll talk about more and more about it as we go deep into the chapter and this term will be actually very you'll be getting very familiar with this latter but for now um, this much would be good enough inertia is the resistance of change of a state and inertia is related to mass but it is not mass okay 